If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to click on the subscribe button, then click on the settings button, check it off, and then click on save. Thank you. All right, guys, the wife has bought her another car. Woohoo! She's bought a 2001 Ford Escape with a 2.0 liter, liter engine. And there it is. Nice. I thought what I could do in this uh, video here, uh, the wife was saying something about the AC. You drive it back and it what, went hot. Yes. Okay, it went hot, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to maybe show you some of the guys about some leak detection methods, some of the ways that I do. It. Okay, so let's go over to the car. We got the gauges hooked up. Let's take a look at the pressures and kind of go from there. Hey, Terry. Yeah. You think you're at the beach? You're barefooted, man. Where are your shoes? I'm trying to stay cool. <laughs> okay. Next, you're going to be seeing my pants and my shirt's going to be off, and I'm going to be running around in my underwear. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe they might come off, too. Who knows? <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our gauges here. You see on the low side, the one on the left, we're running about, oh, it looks like 40, 42, 43 PSI. And the one over there on the right, high side, we're running probably, looks around about 225 PSI. Now the ambient temperature and the humidity has a lot to do with the pressures that you see. Right now we're running at about 96 degrees Fahrenheit and we have high humidity, okay? So this is not, it's in the ballpark, okay? I, I would like to see this here suction down a little bit more, maybe around about uh, 38, 37, 38, okay? But we're okay. Now, if your pressure is a little bit high, say I suspect maybe this might be a little bit high then we could have a little bit of air in the system and the system is to recharge you know they put some oil in it most people they're not going to take and recover this here recover it out weigh it see how much is in it and then they're going to go back and say fix the leak and then recharge it put the right amount in there most people are just going to charge it up they're going to feel it and they say oh the line feels good I'm blowing cold air out of vents and all is good so it's possible that we may have a little bit of overcharge here and possibly we could also have air in the system. Air being, uh, is going to be mixed right with the refrigerant. That's also going to um, add, uh, that's going to add to the head pressure over here. This pressure goes up, that automatically is going to go up, okay? So it could be one of those two things, all right? So let's uh, let's go over and say some, just, uh, just for a video here, let's just go and uh, let's see what, uh, to maybe look for some leaks okay now i like to take advantage of this here high head pressure here 225 and look at the condensing side in other words uh we want to i'm just going to basically look around across the condenser this here condenser is going to have this here head pressure up there so let's take advantage of that high head pressure and let's see what we can find anything on the condenser side now what i've done is i've taken the grill off on the front of the uh the condenser so I can get more of it exposed. So I'm going to use an electronic leak detector. It's made by Infocon D-Select. Okay. And you want to put it about a quarter inch away from where you suspect maybe a leak. Now you want to move across so it can sample the air. This here's got an air pump inside this here leak detector so it's sampling the air. So I'm just kind of moving across. Not too fast. About a quarter inch away. Just see if we can pick up anything. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. You can see the procedure I'm doing. I'm just kind of going right on down. I'm just moving right on down the line here. Now going across the front of the condenser, you know, a little bit over the over the back side of the condenser, or what I could get to, did not see anything come up on the leak detector. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn, we're going to turn the engine off. And when we turn the engine off, the pressures are going to start to stabilize on the low and the high side. But before they start to get automatically start dropping it, I'm going to try to get right down here on the outlet of the condenser. I want to look at this high pressure side so the pressure is up. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. So we're going to get ready to turn the car off and then we're going to go there. All right, the car has just been turned off, so the pressure is uh, still high, but you know it is dropping because it's trying to stabilize. What I'm doing is I'm on the outlet of the condenser, and I am looking at this here pressure coming off of this here where it's uh, got a flange here. 
Okay. I'm looking around the AC pressure switch here. This is a high pressure switch. Just making sure we don't see anything there. Now also we keep in mind that refrigerant is heavier than air. And that was me making all that fuss because I touched the probe here. Okay. Are you leaking? No. <laughs> so anyway, about a quarter of an inch, and when you sweep across, you want to go about a, about, a, about a second across, about like this right here. This way, you know, you're up underneath a feeding, so you're checking there also. Okay. Especially where you see rubber crimps, like this right here, you also want to be sure you're checking that too. Okay. Also be sure to get up under... That, that was me. That was me when I moved the probe. <laughs> so, come underneath. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, you know, looking and mm -hmm. going over each one of these joints. Especially, you also want to look at these here. You want to look at these couplers right here. It has a garter spring in there, right? So you can also use, get, make sure you get on those. Also, you want to try to get underneath, okay? So all that looks good. Oh. So you just kind of move on down to where you see joints, right? So here's a, here's a rubber crimped in there on the aluminum line. Coming up underneath. No. Nothing there. And you just kind of move right on along. All right, and uh, one other thing. One other thing you see down here, here's a drip line. It comes off the evaporator. You can also Pass right across the outlet of your drip, uh, where the water is coming out, the condensation. Sweep across that. If you got a leak in the evaporator, then some of that refrigerant is going to get mixed in with the water, so that's going to also give you an indication. Again, we got another crimp here with a hose, rubber. I'm just going around it to see what we can find. Don't see anything there. Okay. Here's a, here's a low pressure switch, it's on the accumulator, just checking around it. There's another, uh, there's another coupler with the garter spring in it. So that looks good. Okay, another check. Another check is to get up under the car. Find your compressor. Find your compressor, Get uh, you want to go around to the back to the two lines where they connect up on the back of the compressor and you want to go around those lines. Also, go around on the front seal where the, uh, where the uh, clutch is at, also go around that. Especially underneath the bottom, refrigerant again, you know, it's heavier so it's going to sink. So I'm going to go around that and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go in here and look under there. Yep, lines look good. No indication of nothing. Oh. Coming up around on the front side of the compressor where the seal is at. Sweeping across that. And that looks good. Okay. All right, so that looks all right. Okay, electronic leak detectors are pretty good. This one here can detect one-tenth of an ounce of loss of refrigerant in a year, okay? All right, now, another method that we can use. It's all the bubble method. Now, I recommend this here product, Big Blue, this can detect down to like four tenths of an ounce per year. It does a lot better than just mixing some Dawn up in the, and mixing up and make soap bottles. This here will, uh, well, I'm gonna leave you guys to research it. So. Another method is you can come right back over here and you can spray. You can spray right there on your fittings, all your suspected areas. Hmm. And if you see a leak, you know, if you got a bad leak, let's just say, let's say I want to put it down in this here coupler. So I'm going to spray, just spray a little bit on there. And what you want to do is you may not see something right away. So what you want to do is wait like five to uh, 30 minutes and you'll come back and you'll look and see if you see any tiny uh, bubbles. So they call them what, uh, micro bubbles. Uh, and also, if it turns to a white foam, 
Then also there's another leak. Okay, so you can uh, do the same thing. You can go back. You can put all this on here. Okay, spray it. Let it sit. Come back. And then you can see if you got a leak. Okay, so that's one method. Okay, another method you can use is using ultrasonics. Something like this right here. Here's a receiver. And uh, what you can do on this, if uh, it, it will detect pressure. So you put your headphones on. And you can kind of scan across the areas. If you hear the high pitch sound that's inside your headphones, then you know you got a leak. You could take it and just do kind of a scan. You know, a quick scan. This will give you an idea that there's a leak. Then when, when you want to pinpoint it, that's where this here tube will come in so you can localize it. So again, you can do the same thing. You know, go over your fittings and all. You know, go over your uh, couplers and things like that. You know, just go across here if you see a uh, high pit sound. Now, what's kind of nice also about this is it's not just pressure, but you can also, if you see that you've got a vacuum, you got a vacuum pulled on your system, and you want to find out where's my leak, and instead of putting uh, nitrogen in it and pressurizing it, then what you can do is you can come back and you can use this, and hopefully this can find where your leak is at, because it'll look at pressure and also on vacuum. Okay, so there's another method. Last method, we can use UV dye. Now, a lot of guys, you know, they would jump right to this to start with, and that's fine. I kind of like to start off with, uh, you know, using the other methods beforehand. A lot of times you can find those methods, but uh, sometimes, you you know, you got to go with this right here. And this, even this, and all those other methods that I show you does not guarantee you can find a leak. Sometimes they won't come out. So you got most of the time you're going to find them under static pressure. You know, they're going to leak. Other times you're going to have to have the pressure on them while it's running. Other times the engine's got to be running, there'll be vibration, so then they'll leak and they can reseal. Mm. So anyway, this is a method here you can also use. Using a UV dye, put in the system, you know, while the air conditioner is running, and you'll take this, you'll put this on the low pressure side through your port. And a lot of times, you know, you'll see some guys in their tank and just push this thing down and down and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it. Well, you know, you don't need to put a lot of this stuff in it for a typical system here. Uh, one quarter ounce is all you need. Oh. Now on the can, it says three seconds. You know, you push it down, three seconds, one shot, good. I, I, what I do is I count two seconds. I like to put two seconds in there. I'll say thousand one, thousand two, done. Okay. Now, of course, when you use this here system, you're going to have to, you also, you're going to be using a, a UV dye, I mean a black light here, okay, so this is going to make it glow, the uh, dye sort of glow so it's easier to see. And also to make it even easier to detect, you're going to have some glasses here, so you'll wear this. You're sexy. Yeah, and these things come in different configurations. This particular one here, you'll hook it up to the battery. You also got ones that are smaller and they got little batteries in it, you know, self-contained batteries. And you can go around and kind of look around in different areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you have it, guys. A uh, few methods and showing you how to detect some uh, leaks on your AC system. So, if you've got a leak and suspect one on your car, then uh, there's some uh, ways that you can try to find that leak. Okay, so you know what this means? Now you know everything that I know. So, get out there and work on your AC, find your leaks, and uh, see you guys in the next video. You take care.